Coming up on Mountain News at 530, the mother of the teenager who killed four students at a Michigan high school in 2021 is found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Plus, President Biden blames former President Trump for trying to kill the bipartisan border security deal. Plus, soak up the sunny weather because rain chances are looming later this week. Those details coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The mother of the teenager who killed four students at a Michigan high school in 2021 was found guilty on four counts of involuntary manslaughter. It is a groundbreaking decision that could reshape how the law determines who is responsible for a mass shooting. CNN's Michael Yoshida has the story. We find the defendant guilty. A Michigan jury finding Jennifer Crumbly guilty of involuntary manslaughter for her role in the deaths of four students killed by her son, Ethan, at a high school in 2021. It was a, a long time coming, but it's definitely a, a step toward the accountability. Prosecutors argued Jennifer Crumbly is responsible for the deaths because she was grossly negligent in giving a gun to her son, who was only 15 at the time, and said she failed to act after a school counselor recommended she and her husband take Ethan home from school on the day of the shooting to get immediate mental health treatment. She had a legal duty. She negligently performed that legal duty. She negligently did not take steps to take care and protect the other children in that school. Her defense attorney said the blame for the shooting should fall on other people, including Crumbly's husband, for not properly securing the firearm, the school for failing to alert her about her son's behavioral issues, and Ethan himself, who pulled the trigger and was sentenced last year to life in prison without parole. I am asking that you find Jennifer Crumbly not guilty, not just for Jennifer Crumbly, but for every mother who's out there doing the best they can, who could easily be in her shoes. The jury deliberated for more than 10 hours before reaching the historic verdict. This is trailblazer of a case, mm. uh, and it could have repercussions in the criminal law across the country. You cannot choose to not take care of your child. You cannot choose to not nurture your child. I'm Michael Yoshida reporting. Sentencing is scheduled for April 9th. Each count of manslaughter carries a maximum of 15 years, which Crumbly would serve concurrently. Her husband is scheduled to go on trial on the same charges in early March. Well, we are tracking some more fantastic weather across the mountains on this Tuesday evening. Here's a live look across the region from I-64 to Buffalo Mountain, also in Pike County from the US-119, US-23 intersection in downtown Pikeville, and nothing but sunshine and blue sky on this Tuesday. Those current temperatures still mild in the upper 40s and lower 50s, up to 46 in Pikeville, 50 for Jackson, 53 in Manchester, 52 for Harlan, also in Estill County for Irvin at this hour. Up on the radar, we are dry as high pressure continues to dominate the forecast, especially for much of the eastern U.S. And that dry weather will continue as we go into this evening. Those lows are chilly as you wake up on Wednesday. Most of us are close to or below freezing in the upper 20s and lower 30s. So once again, be sure to grab the jacket if you have those plans this evening and as you walk out the door by Wednesday morning. But check out this fantastic forecast on your Wednesday. Once again, we are dry under some blue sky and sunshine. Temperatures also warmer tomorrow. We top out in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Enjoy it because changes are on the way by late Thursday. Thursday, Friday, and the weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Cameron, thank you. After months of negotiations between the White House, Senate Democrats, and Senate Republicans, GOP lawmakers say a bill that would provide emergency funding for Ukraine, Israel, and strengthen the U.S.-Mexico border is dead on arrival in the House. Even the Republicans who helped negotiate the deal now say they will vote against advancing it in the Senate because of opposition in the House. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from the White House. President Biden pleading for Congress to pass the bipartisan border security compromise is blaming former President Donald Trump for trying to kill it. Every day between now and November, the American people are going to know that the only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump. 
and his MAGA Republican friends. The proposal, which would give the White House new powers to crack down on border crossings, has drawn criticism from both progressives and conservatives in the Senate. It looks to me and to most of our members as if we have no real chance here to make a law. I'm angry at our own Republican leadership for going along with it in a terrible bill. Speaker Mike Johnson has called it dead on arrival in the House. Um, the bill does not secure the border and, and it does not prevent illegals from coming into our country. Despite the pushback, the Senate is still expected to hold a test vote this week on the deal. Meanwhile, the House is moving forward with a vote to try and impeach the president's DHS secretary. Republicans accuse Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas of refusing to comply with immigration laws. We're dealing with a prohibition on the uh, uh, Border Patrol and ICE doing the job and being effective. But not every House Republican agrees. Mayorkas is guilty of uh, maladministration on a cosmic scale. But that is not grounds for impeachment. If impeached, the Democratic-led Senate would have to hold a trial where Mayorkas is all but certain to be acquitted. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Washington. It takes a two-thirds vote in the Senate to convict. Former Secretary of War William Belknap became the first and only Cabinet Secretary to ever be impeached. He was accused of using his office for personal gain through kickbacks. A federal appeals court has ruled Donald Trump is not immune from prosecution for reported crimes he committed to reverse the 2020 election results. It is a major blow to the former president's key defense in the federal election subversion case brought by special counsel Jack Smith. Trump has pleaded not guilty to four counts, including conspiring to defraud the United States and to obstruct an official proceeding. Nevada is holding its presidential primaries today, but former President Trump is not on the ballot. That's because the state GOP has opted to award its delegates to the winner of party-run caucuses, which will be held Thursday evening. A 2021 state law scrapped Nevada's presidential caucuses in favor of government-run primaries, but the Nevada Republican Party opted to hold caucuses anyway this year and award the state's delegates to the RNC-based on those results. A State Department employee is the latest person charged in connection to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Kevin Alstrup is a, a diplomatic security officer with the State Department. Prosecutors have charged him with four misdemeanors for reportedly walking through the Capitol building during the 2021 riot and taking photographs. Alstrup joins a growing list of current and former federal employees charged in connection to the January 6th attack. Safety in the skies, front and center on Capitol Hill today. Federal Aviation Administration head Michael Whitaker gave his first congressional testimony since his swearing in last October. It was also his first time facing lawmakers since last month's incident involving an Alaska Airlines Boeing jet that grounded all similar aircraft for weeks. CNN's Karen Kaifa has more on that from Washington. Thank you, uh, Federal Aviation Administration Administrator Michael Whitaker before a House subcommittee to take questions about safety in the skies for the first time since his Senate confirmation in October. The safety of the flying public is our mission. Lawmakers with particular scrutiny around the January 5th incident aboard an Alaska Airlines flight where a door plug flew off a Boeing aircraft in midair. Make no mistake, this was a close call, too close. That prompted the FAA to ground all similar aircraft, the Boeing 737 MAX 9, and announced changes to FAA oversight of commercial aircraft production. We now have uh, 20 uh, inspectors on the ground in Boeing uh, engaging with the employees in every phase of the manufacturing process. Also address the ongoing shortage of air traffic controllers. Increasing our controller ranks will help mitigate risks associated with controller fatigue and possible expansion of controller training programs within colleges and universities to boost the ranks. Do you see new programs opening up as a result of your efforts? I, I'd like to see that. It hasn't been our initial focus. We're trying to work with the schools that are already sort of set into that space, but I don't see any reason why other schools, particularly those with a technical bent, uh, can't have this program as well. Whitaker also said he plans to meet Wednesday with airline leaders to discuss safety trends. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. 
Actor Jonathan Major's sentencing date in his assault and harassment case has been postponed until April 8th. The postponement came after Major's attorneys filed a motion to set aside the verdict. Prosecutors have until March 5th to respond to that motion. The actor was convicted in December of third degree reckless assault and non -criminal, a non-criminal charge of harassment as a violation. He was acquitted on another assault charge and one count of aggravated harassment. Country singer Toby Keith has died after a battle with stomach cancer. According to a statement on his website, Keith, quote, pa passed peacefully Monday night, surrounded by family. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2022, but still performed at the People's Choice Country Awards last year, where he received the Country Icon Award. Keith is known for many hits like Should Have Been a Cowboy, How Do You Like Me Now, Red Solo Cup, and I Want to Talk About Me. Keith leaves behind his wife, Tricia, and three children. He was 62 years old. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, the average American feels they would need north of $200,000 a year to feel financially secure. We'll have some tips to help you make the most of your money. Plus, our next rainmaker is not far away. Your first alert forecast coming up.